Okay, let's start with roll call. <coughs> Ms. Cooper Payton is excused. Ms. Hatlin? Present. Mr. Jacobson? Present. Ms. Jones? Present. Ms. Orcherton? Mr. Patterson? Present. Ms. Salmon? Here. Ms. Snyder is excused. And Ms. Harrell? Here. Okay. Uh, I don't believe there are any changes to the agenda, so next we're going to move to approval of minutes of the previous meeting. Does anybody have any questions or changes? Okay, I move that we, I move that we approve the uh, n minutes of the previous meeting. Can I have a second? Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Uh, next we're going to move to the staff presentation. Hello. Um, okay. So starting off with Artists of the Corridor. Currently it's still Lori Fuller and her landscape art. Um, she was nice enough to extend her exhibition while the next Artist of the Corridor, Rusty Clevinger, is gathering his materials. Um, he's planning on showcasing art from his third grade students. Um, currently he's set to do that or install his artwork um, at the end of the month. Um, I'm still trying to coordinate with him, trying to get like an a date for an exhibition to the public and then he's also trying to talk to the third grade teachers in order to have the students come in and see their art hung up on the walls and stuff. If you only want to put your um, this month's episode of Art Now features the Capoeira and and Angol Angola Center. <laughs> so it's difficult. Um, they interviewed Aisha and Dennis Cheramonte. Um, also, the Urbana Public Television will receive two awards um, from the fifth annual Best of the Midwest Media Fest and Awards Banquet, which recognizes the best community access television programs in the Midwest on Thursday, April 6th. Um, the community producer, Jacob Bernard, will receive an award for the third straight year for his work producing a promotional video. And then Art Now received an achievement, o achievement award in the professional category short film documentary slash featurette thanks to production coordinator Jason Liggett and his work on episode number 71 featuring Judith Johnson. And I'd just like to say personally thank you Jason. You've been doing a wonderful job on, on this uh, whole project. So Definitely. You, you do, it's well deserved. <laughs> I told them they were producing magic behind that wall. <laughs> we should never underestimate them. Oh no. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Okay, um, the sculpture guide and the postcards are still available online for those who are interested. And there's the postcard again. Open Scene um, has been going really well. Uh, this last past or this past weekend featured Andrea Perkins and her traditional storytelling. Um, it was really interesting. I was able to attend Friday night. Um, the next open scene event is Mother Nature, and it takes place March 24th through the 26th. And it'll start off with a hip hop concert and showcase called Movement. Should be really interesting. Um, for the Boneyard, Art Boneyard Arts Celebration, this year we will have um, traditional fish painting called Gyotaku. Um, Bodacious from C4A, Los Guapos, um, Walking Marionettes by Ann Newman, and Joyful Bubbles. Okay, um, this uh, this month's ad uh, update, I should say, um, Facebook was found an increase of 13 likes, um, Twitter found an increase of 16 followers, and then Instagram an increase of 23 followers as well. Um, there are t currently two ads running on smilepolitely.com, which promote Art Now, um, the Capoeira Center's Art Now episode, and then the 2017 Boneyard Art Celebration. Okay. Um, so this year, for the 2017 Urbana Arts Grant Program, there were a total of 30 applications that were selected for funding. Um, the announcement ceremony is set for Friday, April 7th from 5 to 7 p.m.
And then the public arts coordinating position received a total of 62 applications. Wow. So um, it's quite a lot. And the interviewing process will begin in April. Um, I'd like to just mention also that uh, Katie Harrell, who's our new member on our commission, uh, she and her husband Leon have uh, very graciously uh, contributed an additional $500 to the arts grant program for this year. I want to thank you for that. Thank you very mm -hmm. much. Thank you. Okay. Um, I believe the next uh, item for discussion is the uh, grants program. Did you have anything to say on it? Or? Um, I included the recipient list in the packets, so you guys can take a look at that. Um, other than that, I didn't have really anything. I'm just curious, the people who did participate in the jury, um, did you want to say a few words about how that went? It always um, is. Great. Well, I'm glad you were able to participate. And everybody, if you get a chance to do it next year, if you haven't done it before, it's really, it's fun and it's, it's a lot, it's very gratifying to see what you support, mm -hmm. so. Okay. Uh, next, we're going to move on to the Arts Program and Commission Visioning. Uh, that means we're going to sit down and talk a little bit about the Commission and our roles in it and uh, how we see it fitting in, into the community as well. So we're going to be moving to the middle and uh, we're going to start out with an icebreaker and then after that we'll just have some questions that we'll discuss as, as a group. So. Okay. So actually, before the icebreaker, before we sit down, if everybody wants to stand up, we're going to be walking around a little bit to get to know you a bit. Because we have three minutes that long. And that's what these are for. Well, you know, Katie doesn't know this all yet. No, I understood. I just wasn't sure what the reason for it was. So we can just come into this area. Um, we have some new commission members. I know we have Katie. I think some people are newer, and I think we always, sometimes we work on this commission, but we don't necessarily all know each other well. Um, so we're just going to do a quick icebreaker, you know, get out, get into the <coughs> visioning session a little bit more. Um, I like to call this one the big question. So what we're going to start out with doing is if everybody can just think of a question that they think will give them insight into other people. So just one question, it can be serious, it can be goofy, just something that you think will help get to know that other person. If you had to ask only one question of somebody, what question would you ask? So just think on that. I'll give you like a minute to think on that. I know, it's, it's a tough question. It Whoa. is hard. Maybe so, two minutes would be good. <laughs> yeah, I guess, uh, and when you're ready, what you can do is come over to the center area when you have your question ready. That way we'll know when everybody's ready. No pressure, though. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> So it's one question. If you had one question to ask somebody to get to know them, what would that question be? I guess we're in now by virtue of the question. <laughs> Does everybody have their question? No. <laughs> Got one? So what I want you to do is pair off with somebody, anybody? And what you're going to do is you're going to ask your question of that person, and the other person's going to answer that question. Pretty simple. Um, is there, do we have an uneven number? Mm -hmm. If you have three, um, you know. Seven, yeah. Maybe we we'll have to enlist Brandon. Yeah, I think we're yeah. going to have to enlist Brandon and then Morgan. <laughs> <laughs> or Morgan, yeah, right. Sorry about that. Um, so what you're going to do is you're going to answer the question, and then what I want you to do is take the other person's question and then ask somebody else that question and keep doing so until you've had a chance to talk to every person. So, ready, go. <laughs> Uh, 
Conversation with the people you're having now, and then come to us. Right, right. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Oh, good. We've got it up there. Okay. <coughs> huh, I don't know how to work this. <laughs> <laughs> well, if it's, are we going to be so looking at that? Uh, uh, yeah, for each of the questions when those come up. Okay, so. yeah, is it a PowerPoint? Should. Yes, it is. Hit the space bar. The space bar? Okay. This? Yeah, just at the bottom of the keyboard. Oh, this one? Yeah. Okay. All right. No? Okay. Well, I'm not. Yeah. Okay. Just hit the Sorry. arrow and it'll change the, the arrow? page. Or click the mouse. Cool. There's lots of options. So okay. Whatever you feel most comfortable with. I can. Oh, oh we did that one. We we did did that that one. one. Okay. okay. So, anyway, this uh, discussion is just going to be open. Uh, we're not going to use this to make any decisions today. This is more of just talking about our mission and how we see our our commission fitting in the community. Um, so we're going to start with the mission statement, uh, which is right up there, to foster a city where all residents, emerging artists, established artists, and non-artists may engage with the arts and where artists thrive and are valued. And we're going to focus, uh, first of all, on just three questions that focus on a uh, city where artists thrive and are valued. Okay. Our first question is going to be, okay. What does a truly thi thriving local arts community look like to you? So I'm going to give you a minute to think about that, and then I'm going to go around the table. And if I get to you and you want to think about it some more, tell me, and we'll go ahead, and then I'll come back to you. Do you want to start? Or? Sure. Okay. 
Yeah. Uh, well, of course, any community that has a thriving arts atmosphere mm -hmm. is attractive to not only potential businesses, but people who want to come and live here. Mm -hmm. And as, as a resident or parent, when I came here, I felt like it was a good place to come because, not only because of the university, but because I, I would want to live in an art, a, a city that had a heavy interest mm -hmm. on, on the arts. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think when, when businesses think about relocating, that's one of the things they really look at, is, mm -hmm. is there an active art scene in a community, because that, that helps to attract what, people. What would their community look like, though? Sort of like Champaign-Urbana, but maybe with a little <laughs> bit more. Uh, the problem is we have such a small pool of uh, population, but I think we've got a good mix of interest in various art disciplines. Mm -hmm. And whether it's landscaping or uh, all, all forms of arts, we've we've talked about within the commission. But um, s some place that would be attractive to people to want to live here and come here and stay here. Yeah. And I've been here a long time, and I can still say that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm still here. And you've been a good part of it as well. Yeah, yeah. Eric, what what would you think? I think it would be a community community. where you move around if where you move around in the community. And you see evidence that there's art. You mm -hmm. see posters advertising performances. You see visual art or sculpture. Mm -hmm. it, it's just a part of what's around, at least throughout the downtown. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. To give off that vitality. Yeah. Yeah. Jason. Um, I think, I mean, if we're talking about in, an, in a realistic sense, in like a town with like this, this level of population. Um, yeah, and we are. I th yeah, <laughs> I, yeah. I, I, yes, and I think in this context, I think Urbana is really, is really wonderful. Um, I mean, being an artist that lives lives, lives in this town, um, I mean, the if if it could get any better, the things I think would just be a little bit more uh, commercial accessibility for art, not commercial, but necessarily like commercial galleries, and being able to sell work at a more regu <coughs> regular. Pace and mm -hmm. um, but I, but that again in a town with forty thousand people that's that's not a very realistic thing. I mean it's just the numbers aren't there. So mm -hmm. but within like a realistic way of, of looking at this town, I think Urbana is really impressive. Um, I that's why I live here. I mean that's not, not the only reason why I live here. Um, I grew up here, but but it is uh, it is it's, it is impressively good. I think. Okay, Janelle. And if you want to think some more, I can come back well, to you. I was sort of thinking about bo both of those things. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and evidence that there's an, uh, an artistic community, um, but also a space for there to be the stuff before the evidence that the public or the non-artists can sort of be in. I think the, more, the less we separate between artists and non-artists, then the more people uh, see that there's value in the process too, and so it's not so intimidating to go to a gallery or go to a thing they've never been to before. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that's a good point. Not necessarily education, but I guess you could fit under that category. Mm -hmm. um, but I think the more we can opportunities to yeah participate in participate. the process or yeah. have artists be more integrated or you know remove the artist and non-artist categories maybe somehow. I don't know how that would look per se, but I think that would make it more commercially easy, like beneficial, and then also we'd be able to see more of it, of all the steps. Okay. Sarah. Um, do you mind if I give a concrete example of this? No. <laughs> no, this actually, is, this is I, one I'd of like the to explore that, that more. I specifically wrote down on my, it was the first thing I wrote down on my list. Um, so um, one of the things that I have seen is a, a large building that was originally abandoned that the city eventually owned because it was abandoned mm -hmm. and they turned it into studio spaces mm -hmm. and with the understanding that the artists had to had to fill certain certain profiles so they weren't all going to be painters there was mm -hmm. a glass blower and there was you know lots of different types of artists in the mm -hmm. building and they paid their rent with open hours to the public Mm. And so okay. they had to be open on Saturdays. They didn't have any choice about that. And they were open from like mm. 10 to 5 or something like that. And then there was a, there were frequently evenings when you could go and so they had kids evenings and they had adults evenings and they mm. had wine parties and they had lots of different things. Mm. 
Um, but essentially, the artists paid the rent with those presentation sorts of mm -hmm. things that they mm -hmm. did, mm -hmm. and um, little classes that they had. Um, and it was very successful, and exposed people to lots of different kinds of art that they might not otherwise mm -hmm. um, have seen. There was a guy who made violins. It was amazing, absolutely amazing. Where was this? Um, <laughs> um, so <laughs> this was, it actually still exists. It's a building, ooh, come to think of it, though, it's flooded three times this winter, uh -oh. so oh, it might not be open. <laughs> um, but it's right next to the river in downtown Reno. Uh-huh, interesting. The artist's loft. It's not a very exciting name, but it's, it's called. Yeah. Um, yeah, so. But that I, would be like some place you could, if you were on a trip, maybe you'd want to yeah. go see it. Absolutely, you know. absolutely. And they have, they have different festivals and things throughout the year, and it's open for extended hours during those times to pull in the largest number of people to, to see mm -hmm. what's going on there. Um, and it is next door to a gallery. Mm. That then once they finish their work, you know, the gallery is there. So if people want to go and see things and purchase things, and it increases their their profile as artists. Mm -hmm. And um, the way that they had it worked out at one point was that the artist had a particular time period, like 18 months or two years that they were there. Mm -hmm. And then they would go on and find another place and they'd get a new artist to come in. So it was sort mm -hmm. of constantly revolving. Yeah. Um, and that was hugely su successful. Um, and that is another thing I think that, that we have several festivals that happen in town that aren't related to Urbana. And the more we can become connected with those, part of those, and supplementary to those, the more, um, the higher the profile will be for artists, the more opportunity there will be for them to show their work. And, and the more that becomes integrated into the entire community. Okay. Katie? Um, so what popped to my mind, and this really ties in kind of what Janelle was saying, is like uh, many doorways. So there has to be a lot of ways to get into whatever this thriving community is. And I mm -hmm. think it's a lot about meeting people where they are so you can help them get to the next step. So whether that's, we were talking about arts in the schools or mm -hmm. whether it's something that, you know, is more sort of you come in and experience it just as an observer or whether you're engaging with an artist. So I think having opportunities all along the progression mm -hmm. and having a lot of doorways to walk through, I think is really important. Yeah, no, I think that's a good point. By the way, th you were reminding me of the vault when you, I don't know how many mm -hmm. people have been there to see it, but it's similar to what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and you reminded me, because <coughs> one of the, um, the grants was talking about the water project. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking about when I travel and I went to Silver Spring, Maryland, where my stepson's family used to live. Um, there's this big water fountain in the center of town and in the summer it's always lit and, and the kids are always coming and playing and the mm -hmm. parents are coming and the restaurants and the, the nightlife mm -hmm. it's a very attractive idea so getting ideas from other communities to mm -hmm. that we might want to bring mm -hmm. back or say no I don't think that right. works for our community it's, it's beneficial Okay, um, I think I, I agree with a lot of what's been said already, of course. Uh, art, I think you want to see art throughout uh, the community, whether it's sculpture or, or uh, you know, visual, any kind of visual art, and also opportunities to see performances, and maybe music mm -hmm. and theater as well. Um, I think I'd also like to see opportunities to participate and interact with artists. I don't mm -hmm. know if and it's kind of t mm -hmm. speaking to what you were talking about, too. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, here's our next question. How would you know when the arts and artists are being strongly valued by the community? What would tell you then? Take a minute to think about that. Economically, if they stay here and continue mm -hmm. to thrive and mm -hmm. you know build a f buy a home, have a family, that's a pretty good indicator <laughs> that they might, that would be a so. first obvious one, yeah. and want to keep creating or doing doing their work in this area, <coughs> or attracting other people to come here and do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say. Just count the ones who move in and the ones who move out. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty straightforward. <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm a numbers guy. <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's true. You said were. <laughs> yeah, Jason. Well, I think having having this art art commission is a, is a perfect sign that the community values 
Mm -hmm. values the arts if it didn't they wouldn't want the wouldn't want tax dollars spent on this yeah and so i think that's a really sort of like telling artists that you know you're welcome here and that there's opportunities okay. janelle <laughs> yeah, okay, Sarah. Yeah. Um, I think part of it is increasing attendance at events, mm -hmm. um, which is, you know, part of that is you know, meeting people where they are. Also, while in no way do I want this to become the next Sedona, Arizona, there is, <laughs> there is something to be said for a group of people who identify themselves as, as people who are users, makers, of art and value that, and, and other people come to see them, not to live there, but to see them and their work, and they value that too. Mm -hmm. So maybe they would include kind of promoting this place as a place for, mm -hmm. for art. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, Katie? Um, this one's got me a little stumped. I like the answers that I heard, like mm -hmm. what Jason said, and also what Sarah said. Mm -hmm. The, my initial thought was it's not a side hustle, so they're not doing it on the side. It's it's their main mm -hmm. profession and vocation. Mm -hmm. um, that you mm -hmm. can actually know people who, who are, are doing who are that. working as an artist. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, is one thing. I guess other things might be like um, having it baked into services that are provided to everyone. So like art in schools and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So that kind of speaks to Jason's point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. Yeah, Janelle. Yeah, I was I was kind of thinking about that how instead of being like an extra thing in the community, like we have this thriving business community that, oh, we also do art on some weekends. It's like, no, this is this is the art building, this is the restaurant building, or whatever, however it's delineated, it's not an art society thing. Mm -hmm. Or the community doesn't go, yeah, we went to our art showing for the month, we're done. It's something mm -hmm. we can go to regularly, it's part of our life. It's yeah, not it's a, integral. It's yeah. not the Christmas mm -hmm. market, it's we all go to the market, and mm -hmm. we the market. Yeah. The yeah. Purpose. That's a good point. Yeah, yeah I, I uh, answered this by saying you would see support from the business community. I think a lot of restaurants and other stores are willing to display artists' work here. Um, and, and sometimes they're yeah. willing to provide workspace, too. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, large participation, which I think somebody mentioned already, and uh, a willingness of the community to contribute to or support artwork organizations and you know they would include 40 north and other groups like that so okay uh, and I have a quick question. Oh, yeah sure you said um, about businesses giving space to the artists and stuff is mm -hmm. there any way that could be turned around because often we as artists we go to the business community we mm -hmm. help or let's work together mm -hmm. it would be cool if we could flip it where like an art a business wants to come into the art commons and say hey we see you're doing a thing can we have something here too that might be a neat, mm -hmm. a neat sort of benchmark how how would well I don't want to do well, any details because we didn't really do, want to do, 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 do details well, I have right to now, say in my experience I've, that's happened with me yeah like I've great. from uh, I have some work up at at flying machine right now and I was asked to put that there mm -hmm. um, also next door at collab the, the giant <coughs> huge piece I have there that they asked me so and, I, and again I think that that's unique to Urbana and I think that the culture of being welcome with arts I think is really sort of made that made stuff like that happen I mean it's not like a I mean I think what you're describing is like a system and a program set for that I mean this is just my personal experience but but I think that you make a good point yeah mm -hmm. sometimes businesses are not or not-for-profits partnering together on the same cause they use their resources collectively and it goes much further yeah. but I can think of even like Alan Strong at Silver Creek and this is, um, in my case my upcoming event is at Menachee's in Champaign but mm -hmm. they they're willing to host events because they want to it's also advertising for their businesses so yeah. bringing artists to their restaurant or their well, place and of business in the community want to go there because of the art yeah. yeah so, so yeah. it's it's kind of a win-win scenario yeah Okay. Next question. What do you envision? Whoops. <coughs> oh yeah, that's right. It's it's written differently here and there. What do you envision the role of the Public Arts Commission and its members to be? I guess in a community where artists are thriving and valued. I'll give you a minute or two. 
I do it differently? I'm going to go around this way. <laughs> so we'll start with you, Katie. So the things that pop immediately to mind for me is bringing light to programs, like in a public relations way, even if it's not the program that's coming from the Public Arts Commission. So mm -hmm. kind of bringing attention to things that other arts organizations are doing, um, I think would be an important role to play. And then the other thing was just sort of um, going back to ensuring access. That's something that's really important to me personally, is just making mm -hmm. sure that we will provide um, uh, means to engage however people are ready to do that mm -hmm. um, in a way that they can be mm -hmm. part of it. Okay, Sarah? Um, I think it's, it's the same role that, that what really truly good leadership is and that's to be a good servant of the, the needs of the population. So if the need of the population is to coordinate between the artists that we do have, because we have a large number of artists oh, yeah. in, in this community, to coordinate between them and their possible viewers or participants or consumers, depending on what kind of art it is, mm -hmm. and to help them with publicity and to help the people who are ready and willing to consume art to be able to do that and then also to say to people who don't have the experience or or don't know that they want that to say hey we've got this mm -hmm. yeah Janelle yeah I think it could be a more a more developed commission I guess like perhaps some of it would be more involved like you're saying with whatever the community decides it, it may need. So there may be sort of, not a split, but like another layer, I guess, where some parts of people are really directly involved in in those areas, and some may be more uh, on the longer term, sort of visioning the long term thing. I guess we kind of have that now, um, but it might be more, more involved in that. Okay, Jason? I agreed with what Kate said. That's pretty much how I see it in the just, keeping an eye on the community and help and just having an ability to sort of like know what's going on and having a group of people that want to make change and want to extend the arts and make them more of a more fluid in the community okay. I feel like that's what we're doing so I think right. that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a good thing <laughs> yeah I'll, I'll yeah. use a science word again I think we're catalysts and we catalyze the interaction between artists and their audiences uh -huh. yeah that's a good way to look at it yeah I, I was sitting here writing and thinking, well, we've done a lot of that since we started. I, I, I have oh, yeah. the, the... Barb and I have been on a long time. Yeah, I, been I was on the task me. force to form this commission, so I've, I've got some history, and I'm thinking, you know, I think back, and, and it feels really good to know that what, what we've done and what, what we've accomplished and how we've grown and learned sometimes from, um, you know, our early beginnings. And I, I just wrote down here, create opportunities, access, support and promotion, communicate with the community, and I guess basically, like you said, be a watchdog, yeah. and um, not be afraid to be, stay open-minded to new ideas and projects and things that would enrich our community. So yeah. I, I have to leave, but I yeah. want to share with you a sort of mini tragedy that just popped up. So I sent a note message to Naomi, which is, I will leave here at 5.15, and of course, they always prompt you to finish something. So I said, I will leave. And the prompt that came up was, you. Oh, dear. <laughs> thought, oh, no, this must be based on a whole pile of really sad things that happened. <laughs> uh oh, we'll see you later. <laughs> If you had put a period on it, would that have stopped it? I don't use iPhones, I don't know. If you had put a punctuation, would that have stopped? The lesson I have learned is always wear the reading glasses when sending a text. <laughs> yeah, that's a good lesson. <laughs> the lesson I've learned is don't hit send before you reread it. Because <laughs> it sometimes says things that you didn't say. <laughs> Okay, I was just going to mention, and I think these are pretty much reflecting what everybody already said, uh, make art available to the community. I, I think I would like to say especially free of charge, mm -hmm. uh, as ma much as possible, um, and to encourage and support artists. And I think, you know, one way we do that, of course, is through the grants. I think that's a really strong way to support the arts. So, how are we doing on time? I have not been paying attention to you. So.
Oh. Yeah. Oh, all right. You can ask the, I mean, ask the local community about these things. Like, what do you think? How are we doing? What do you want more of? Well, mm -hmm. honestly, when we first started the commission, there a survey like that was done. Now it's been a while, and so maybe that's something we want to consider doing in the future. But we have to see what happens when we've got our new coordinator. <laughs> right. so, yeah, so. sometimes we've gotten feedback after a grant cycle. Um, I was, I was, tell me your first name again? Katie. 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 Um, I have to do this twice and then it'll stay. It's all right. right. Um, if it's only twice, you're better than me. <laughs> <laughs> well, if I see it and I say it, that helps. Um, we were, I was telling her how years ago we met with, the commission met down at Yankee Ridge School Library with all the public art, m music teachers and artists and anybody who was involved with fine arts to say, what do you need? How can we help? How can we better serve the community? And I don't know, maybe maybe doing that again or just being at least being open to people reaching mm -hmm. out to us and letting them know that they can reach out and say, you know, what do you think about this program or what about this need? Would you address it or can we address it? I don't know. Yeah. Maybe that's something we could consider. Well, like I said, let's wait till we get our new coordinator. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, I think we could still we can talk about it. I don't know. Occasionally, somebody will ask me about what we're doing in in the community. I always want to be open to taking their suggestion if necessary, you know, passing it on and sharing it, or at least, at least making them feel good about what we're doing and what we're trying to do. Because sometimes, in the beginning, people didn't quite understand what we were all about. Yeah. And we, d we weren't getting, we weren't able to get the word out for a while. It took a while for people to understand that we're here and we're, we're serious and we, we really want to support this program. So word of mouth has helped a lot since the beginning. Yeah. Okay, we're going to move to a different thing. Uh, here now more this is more focusing on the Commission and in our particular group uh, how did you learn about the Commission and why did you join I'm sorry. <laughs> I got tricked into it <laughs> <laughs> that's all right you did really we want to know these things <laughs> that's really sorry. It, wasn't, it wasn't an unpleasant trick it was just the librarian because I'm a teacher at the high school the librarian it forwarded me this email <coughs> that later I found out he forwarded to me by accident. Oh no. So he forwarded me an email that said that, that you were looking for a new commission member. And I thought, oh, well, that sounds really interesting. And so I replied to him, but I, I sort of, it was a low priority and I was at a, a crunch. So it was three or four days later and I replied to him and said, oh, this sounds really interesting. <laughs> and he replies with, wait a minute, what do you mean? <laughs> and so then I went to talk to him and he said, oh yeah, this is great, this is really, really, really great. Well, I found out later, oh good goodness, now I can't think of her name, the lady who stepped down from the commission and I sat next to her. Ginny? And she had Virginia Waller? There we go, oh, Jimmy. there we go, there we go. Jenny. Sorry, yeah. sorry, my okay. brain just like refused to provide. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I've been there. <laughs> You're younger than I am. You should be going there yet. <laughs> I've taught all day. I haven't got two brain cells left. <laughs> um, and um, so eventually, and I, I, I send an email off to Pauline. Pauline sends me this stack of forms. I just fill them out, honestly. I fill out so many papers. I didn't really read very closely. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> and then I start getting these emails. You should be here. And I'm like, oh, okay. So I show up. I came in here the first time and saw the names up here, and I thought, oh my gosh, what mm -hmm. have I been tricked into? Oh, no. Well, you never gave any way of that. That didn't show. Oh, I no. totally faked it. I was faking it. <laughs> you were great. For several times. Well, like we're, we're glad you got tricked. <laughs> Sounds like you tricked yourself. You see what your exercise has done is bringing out the real I don't truth. Think here. Like, this is all you. Yeah, it's totally my fault. Totally my fault. Well, we're glad you're still here. I enjoy it. Well, good. Now that I know what's happening. All right. Well, Katie, you're the newest member. So, um, so I actually learned about the commission about seven or eight years ago when I first moved here. Oh, okay. Um, because my background's in arts administration, so when I moved to this community, I looked around to see what was oh, sure. going on in the arts. And um, came to a couple meetings just out of curiosity as a community member and thought, wow, this is really cool, and I can't believe a place like Urbana, Illinois has <laughs> this type of resource. Like, yeah. whoa, this is amazing. And so just kind of followed along for a while and have known some people who have been involved with the commission and um, 
and with the program and attended programs. And then when um, when I saw in the newsletter that there was a spot open, um, I had sort of retired from a previous volunteer opportunity that was pretty um, intense and time consuming. And I thought, oh, it'd be kind of cool to do something else. So reached out to Brandon. Very yeah. good. Janelle? Um, Pauline asked me, and okay. I don't remember how I met Pauline. <laughs> I was thinking the same day. I don't remember. I think we just ran into each other at a good. bunch of stuff. I don't really know. Okay. But, yeah, I think Maybe I a music her. event or sure. something? I don't know. I don't know. I, I try to go to a lot of stuff around mm -hmm. town, so yeah. I think we ran around with that a bunch of times. But yeah. Yeah, she said okay. I might like it, and I checked it out. That would be fun to participate where I live. So. All right. Yeah. Jason? Um, Kevin Hamilton asked me. Uh, who used to be a member right. um, and who I have tons of respect for I really love the work that he does and I also love how he teaches because I've I've been close to a lot of people that he that has taken his classes at the U of I and so he s said I would be good for this so I trusted him <laughs> well I thank you too because I asked Kevin to give me a recommendation <laughs> Well, as I recall, uh, so far back. <laughs> I know. I see. I had to think back. Uh, I, I think I was actually recommended, but uh, Danielle Chenoweth was, was a, yeah. the, one of the founding members <coughs> of the Commit Task Force. I think she probably was the driving force behind it all originally. And uh, she, I think she contacted me, and then I got a letter from the mayor asking if I would serve on the commission. And it was new, and it was sounded interesting, and I wanted to. Um, after I made a decision years ago that I wanted to really blossom where I was planted, instead mm -hmm. of always looking on the fence and going back to New York and thinking, I don't know if I want to stay here or not, keep one foot out and one in, yeah. you know. Uh, I thought, you know, it's time to give back to my community. I've been here a long time, so why not? Yeah. Yeah. You know. Great. Okay. Let's see. If I can remember. Um, <laughs> I actually saw it in the newspaper when they were first forming it. This was after the task force had made the recommendations. And I was getting ready to retire, and I, I love art. I just do, and it felt like there's not enough of that in this town. <laughs> so I decided I'd jump in, give it a try. And it was, we just completely formed it out of nothing <laughs> because we just came in and it's just like, so what do we do now? <laughs> yeah, we've got a better was, face on fun. art in the city that definitely since this commission started. I'm sorry? We have a better face, the community has a better face for art now. Yes. It wasn't just the art museum or yes. the, this, mm -hmm. you know, the, the institutional art, oh, yeah. art roles. Yeah. There's a lot more the time community involvement now. Yeah, there really is. Okay, uh, next question is going to be, and there's only two more. Oh, I'm we sorry. have about five minutes. You might uh, either pick one of them okay. in the last two or, or even combine them. Let's combine them. Okay, uh, well, what do you hope to accomplish during your time on the commission? And also, do you have any special talents or experience that might be helpful in the work of the commission? And that could include things like collaborations, networking, fundraising, whatever. So I'll just, uh, let's start with Kate. Um, I'm still trying to figure out what I hope to accomplish during sure. time on the commission. Well, um, it's, since it's your first <laughs> meeting, I think we can <laughs> allow you to do that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll give you a break. <laughs> They'll be your uh, homework, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's homework um, but I suppose in terms of things that I hope to bring to the table, I have uh, some experience in fundraising, and I have um, some experience working in the community on projects. So I worked for about volunteered for about four years on the Pachacacha Night Project mm -hmm. in town, and so have met a lot of cool people through that. And, yeah. Um, so I guess those are some of the things. Okay, Sarah. Um, Honestly, I haven't been involved long enough because I've only been here about a year. So, mm -hmm. yeah. um, to be able to see long term exactly the okay. thing that needs to be done or mm -hmm. how to go about doing it, mm -hmm. um, and the thing that that I am very best at if is if somebody says get this thing done and hands it to me, it's going to happen. Like <laughs> I'm, I'm very. I can good relate at that. to that because I'm, I'm like that too. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm an excellent independent worker, and I will ask the right questions and get the thing done. Mm -hmm. Yes, and it's very valuable. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. I own power tools. <laughs> that also is valuable. <laughs> <come in handy. laughs> That's right. You helped on the expo. Okay, Janelle. Um, I've also only been here for about a year, 
right. um, and in town for not super long. But yeah. um, it's it's a place that I really like, and I mm -hmm. see a lot of potential in and growth in town. And mm -hmm. so I think that's sort of what I want to be a part of is helping to sort of spread the roots that are already yeah. going. Um, I, it really feels like the town is. I don't want to say like on the verge of something as if it's broken, but it really <laughs> feels like something is sort of brewing. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, you know, I want to be part of the, the thing that helps sort of push it over that edge and sort mm -hmm. of spreads it around. Yeah. So it's not just sort of channeled to one side or a different side so that it sort of spills over. That's great. Whatever that looks like, I don't know. <laughs> well, we won't know for a while. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> mm -hmm. Jason. Um, well, I... I just, uh, similar to what, what Janelle's saying is I really just want to build on what the commission's already been doing. I think one of the biggest things that I was really proud of, of doing already in the time I've been here is the Art Expo. Mm -hmm. um, I think that really exceeded our expectations. It, it exceeded did. mine. It exceeded it mine did. in the first five and minutes. And you put an enormous amount of effort into yeah, it. To thank you again. It, it, was, it was exactly what I wanted to do. <laughs> so I was like, oh, good, already. Um, but uh, um, so continuing sort of like facilitating those things and uh, – keeping that sort of that as a template on new things to do and like being able to I mean using using this seat as a uh, way to see things in the community that are starting and use my influence to help them and use and bring bring it to all of us and, and see what we can do about those kinds of things so that's what I hope I think what I bring to the community is or bring to the commission is that I am a, a practicing a very practicing artist in yes. uh, in a in the community. It's very valuable. Um, so I think I have a, a I can use my own perspective in that regard to contribute to things that we we have the ability to change or to to bring to the community. Right. Yeah, seeing the needs. Yeah. I'm I'm a lot like Jason because I'm a right. performing musician, right. and I've been I've been in this community a long time and know a lot of people and. Uh, it, it's helped you to are have great with PR. I mean, you can tell us <laughs> everybody you talk to. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I'm happy to do it. I, we, we used to have a publicity committee. Yeah, and I, I served on she that for a while. She could just wheel them off. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I spent a lot of my time doing data management too. So, mm -hmm. um, and as my husband likes to call me the queen of options. Oh, that doesn't work. We'll try this. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I have a lot of tenacity, and I'm willing to work and get things done, and I'm happy to talk to people about causes I believe in. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, I've, uh, I'm happy to say there's been a lot accomplished since I started the, um, with the commission, but I don't think we're done by any means. Oh, no. uh, it's continuing, oh, no. endless, making, creating endless opportunities and new, new visions or recognizing what's needed in the community. Mm -hmm. um, that's always, you, you can't predict what's going to happen, but you know, okay. we want to go along with mm -hmm. the ride and see what happens or make it happen yeah. in our case. We've, we've made a lot of things happen in this community. Yeah that might not have happened if we hadn't opened the door for people. So we just have to keep doing what we're doing and do it well. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, um, accomplish. I think I, I was actually just thinking more of the future, and I was thinking I'd like to see us do more collaborative efforts. And uh, I've even thought maybe someday we could commission actual pieces for it, mm -hmm. <laughs> which would be really nice. We need a theme song. I mean, really. <laughs> well, yeah, okay, well, Chanel, you can work on that. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Oh How about a slogan? <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, in a way, we have already started some <coughs> creating collaborations because their yeah, partnerships have, have grown from pe the um, grant awardees. They've, they've formed uh, new relationships mm -hmm. and things. It's, it's kind of nice to see things growing and people helping each other. In this yeah, community. I think the grants and uh, Art Expo have given a chance for artists to actually meet each other, too. Yeah. It's just been good. So, so anyway, I think that's about it. How do we do, Coach? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh? All right. <laughs> So what, what will happen with these good notes? <laughs> what, what happens now? So we will um, we will summarize them. So just to try to encapsulate what was discussed today, and as Pat was saying, you know this isn't really an ideal year to to change a lot of things in terms of how the programs are going, but it's a great year to start talking about the things you'd like to see changing next year. So we really want to document the conversation. Let me that's just mention for Katie's yeah. benefit. Uh, <coughs> part of that is because our budget is approved in May. 
and we don't even have a coordinator yet. So, mm -hmm. what we're going to do for the next for the following year is going to be set by the budget. Mm -hmm. And it, it's very common in the spring that we sort of have a review. We look back, and we try also try to look forward. Sometimes we think about our five year old five year plan or a ten year plan. You know, long term goals, mm -hmm. and we have this discussion once a year. Yeah. Um, Will we have a coordinator by May? Do you think? Uh, right, right around yeah. then. Um, sure. But uh, this approach allows that whoever comes into that role uh, can take, can, can kind of get, join this conversation, I guess, to sort of the, the goal that we, we would rather not predetermine what that person's going to do, but allow them to join this conversation that's, that the commission is starting now about the direction you want to see things head in. And so, you know, I think our goal, and we'll, we'll bring more information next month, is, is really to, to just present a status quo um, budget to to council unless there's any you know major things that need to change um, overall it feels like things have been going well and, and we've been going we've been moving in the right direction but um, when, as we look forward what what are the things that the Commission wants to to change in the coming years uh, that's really what the, the goal of this conversation was to start developing a sense for that yeah that's one of our roles also as advisory Right. And certainly we've we've done a lot of that with is this now gonna be number five? I'm trying to think. Four. Anna? Um, oh how many how many have we had? Four? Yeah, so Anna. We've had four. Christina so McClellan, Lisa Hatchadori, and Pauline Tanos. Yeah. So sometimes the coordinators will, will c lean on us for ideas or advice or to open doors for them because mm -hmm. sometimes they don't know people. It, it depends on where they come from, but I can yeah. remember opening a door for somebody, setting up a meeting for them to talk to someone. So sometimes we can be influential in that way and helpful. Yeah. And then um, you mentioned the budget. Since we won't have a coordinator or so, so, so uh, there, um, when we submit or have a budget, it, you were talking about um, collaborations. Would there be any point to having like a specific little pile for that? Whether we delineate that in our own minds or paperwork, or if that would need to be a well, formalized it's option? That's something that we would want to do this year because we don't have. Uh, you're saying there should. You're talking about a line item in the budget, right? Well, I don't know how formal or specific it has to be. I don't know if it can just be in our mind for later since we. We don't have uh, a coordinator yet. No, because it has to be approved by the council. So right. I can it's got to be pretty yeah. specific. I can remember in years past where we've had a, a, a line item that maybe we didn't follow through with it then the next year, and so then those funds were discussed, how they could be used towards another program, right. at reallocated. That that has occurred in the past. Right. Yeah. Not a lot, but it has. I can remember occasionally it happened. Yeah. Want to address that? Or? I, I didn't quite hear the question. Oh, could Janelle, do you want to tell me? I again? was just asking about. <laughs> Because you said we'd sort of be presenting the status quo budget. I don't know. I haven't been around long enough to see mm -hmm. what one of those looks like. I just okay. wasn't sure if the, the the grant amounts that we request, I guess, um, if we just ask for a specific amount or if we say some of it's going to go towards this or this. Yeah, it's it's been relatively static for quite some time in terms of, you know, the amount of funding that the public art program receives. There is a public arts fund. And then the public arts program makes use of um, of TIF funds as well right. for the, the downtown area primarily. So some of the projects are limited by the source of the funds, um, but other than that, you know, the grant, the amount of money that goes to the grants, for example, really hasn't changed for several years. And so our ability to do additional programming, in some ways, and I would say. Um, uh, Pauline was very successful in this regard was you know leveraging a limited amount of funds and then earning new income such as with the art expo mm -hmm. um, you know leveraging um, a little bit of existing funds and then and bringing in that new revenue to make something new um, happen as a result and, and so we did um, get a few grants you know, a few gifts yeah and, and the, the national endowment for the arts grant of course private there was one private and that's one of the things the coordinator mm -hmm. does is goes out and looks for for grants from different sources other than the city. Right. Yeah. So I can vary a little bit sometimes. I had a question with, I mean, I, I came in after uh, Pauline was hired, but how, 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 is, how does the selection process for the coordinator work? Like, do the, does, the, does the commission have an involvement in selecting the, the coordinator? Um, 
I, I can't speak of how it's always been histori <laughs> done historically, but typically we have the chair of the commission participate on the hiring commission. Okay. Yeah. And, and I am the hiring manager for the, the position, and um, we involve other city staff typically in, in the hiring process, other uh, department heads or managers typically. But again, I, I wasn't a part of the hiring for, for prior arts coordinators. But if you have other comments on that, please let me know. Um, I'd, I'd definitely be interested in hearing your input as well. We will present the draft budget proposal to the commission next month um, because that is an obligation of the commission, I guess, is to, to advise the council on on the budget, but um, we are not planning to propose any kind of big changes. It's really just a more or less a static proposal, including the, the usual sort of tick-tock of our, um, I guess it would be a murals on glass year coming up. Well, I think, any, anybody have any other questions? Okay. I think <coughs> then we can pretty much call the meeting to a close. We need to, um, I move that we end the meeting. <laughs> Okay, we are done.